What is up, everybody? I am Kevin Ioli. UFC 304 is on July 27th, and in the co-main event of that is a really good heavyweight fight, and we know we all love heavyweight fights. Tom Aspinall, the interim heavyweight champion, is uh, looking for a little bit of revenge, I guess, uh, against my next guest, uh, the number four rated heavyweight in the world, Curtis Blades. Curtis, how are you, my friend? I'm doing good. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Uh, big win for you over uh, Jilton Almeida, um, and, and a great turnaround. That got you a shot uh, to fight for uh, the interim heavyweight championship. But I guess I'll ask you the question that we ask so many people that fight for the interim belt. You win that interim title, are you going to feel like the champion with John Jones still out there holding the real, the real thing? Yes, because I, I've, I view Tom, I view his interim belt as hard as it get, and it was for Tom to get his undisputed belt because they gave Jones um, gone. They gave him a guy with a huge hole in his grappling, and I think Tom having to go knock out. Pavlovich, a guy who was on the hot streak, a guy who was the boogeyman of, of the division, a guy who beat me. Um, All right. I think I was just a lot more impressive, and I, I weigh his belt oh, a little heavier. Yeah. You know, I mean, John Jones, I think everybody, or I shouldn't say I think everybody, but most people would agree is the greatest MMA fighter of all time. And, you know, there's that little debate going on. Dana's having an argument. Uh, is, is John Jones number one pound for pound now? Now, my quick assessment is he would be if he was fighting, but he hasn't fought in over a year, and yeah. he's fought once in four years. And I don't think it's fair to rank him if he's not active. As soon as he fights, then we, we put him back into the rankings. But I, I want to ask you this. You know, do you think at this point in time, Tom Aspinall is a more difficult opponent than John Jones, given given John's uh, the wear and tear in his body and what Aspinall has shown he can do? Yeah, I think uh, youth – always has to be factored in when you're talking about matchups. I think John of five years ago was a lot scarier than John of right now. That's just, that happens. Like, I know even with my myself, five years from right now, I won't be as scary as I am right now. So mm -hmm. that's just natural. Um, but, yeah, I think Tom's a little faster and a little more aggressive and – a heavyweight aggression pays off a lot more than in other weight classes. I wonder, you know, do you feel underrated a bit going into this? Because, you know, obviously you guys fought before. It was a 15 or 18 second fight, whatever it was, and he got injured. So you got a TKO victory, but it wasn't really a fight. And there's so much of the narrative about him. And you're a guy that, you know, number four in the division. And I'm just going to read some of these wins you have, you know, here, Jelton Almeida, uh, Jarzinho Rosenstrike, Alexander Volkov, Junior Dos Santos. I mean, I could keep going. Alistair Overeem, Mark Hunt. I mean, there's a lot of really big wins in there. And it seems like, and the heavyweight division is kind of on fire, but you're not a name that a lot of people talk about. Do you, do you feel kind of slighted a little bit? It used to I used to feel that way, but that was like four years ago. Like, yeah, after the Derek Lewis fight, I stopped really caring what people were saying because when you go back and rewatch that fight, I was, I was handling him the first round. Yeah. I made a bad decision to shoot or take down that I thought I needed, but I didn't need it. I didn't believe in my hands at that point. And people only see the end of the fight. They don't actually watch the whole fight. I can't speak for everyone, but a lot of the casuals, all they do is right. type in your name on uh, on the internet and look up your, your highlight list. They don't watch the actual full fights. So after that, and just hearing how people were breaking down that fight, like, oh, Blaze got destroyed. I'm like, no, I got knocked out. It's heavyweight. You, the margin of error is just so thin. If you make a small mistake, you can yeah. pay it. You go to sleep. But I think I can't allow people to, like, determine how I should view myself. And I just, I stopped caring about other people's opinions. And not everyone's, but, like, Unless you unless you have my respect, unless you're like a respected analyst or someone of that ilk, I'm not. I don't really care what you have to say about me. 
you know, you've only uh, lost four fights to three men, you know, two of them to Francis Ngannou. You mentioned that Derek Lewis lost, and you mentioned that Sergei Pavlovich lost. And the, I guess the one thing, you know, those guys have in common is they might be arguably the four hardest punchers or the three hardest yeah. punchers in, in UFC history. I mean, so, like, you've only lost to the best of the best of the best yeah. there. Yeah, and I hold on to that also. Like, I have all of my – my losses, I can hold my head up high about those. Like, it happens. A heavyweight, like, we don't get the exchanges. I got, did you watch the fights this this weekend, this yeah. past weekend? I was watching my buddy Drew Dober. A lot of those exchanges he had in that first round at heavyweight, somebody's going to sleep. Right. We don't get that. We don't get to have those exchanges. So, you have to grade and evaluate heavyweight fights on a totally different spectrum. So did it surprise you then, knowing what you just said, that Pavlovich and Aspinall lasted, what, a minute, 12 seconds? Like, does that shock yeah. you, knowing what you know about those guys? It didn't shock me. I know they're both aggressive. They both like to get in and get out. And I, I, didn't, I didn't view Aspinall as a power puncher, but he's got the speed. And when you – when you have speed and you're heavyweight, that's almost better than just being a power puncher. So I knew one of them was going to sleep. Just didn't know who. The one thing that about Aspinall that he reminds me of a little bit is, you know, GSP in the sense that he's got the good ground game. He's got the jujitsu and he's got all that and he can grapple and wrestle with you. But he also has pretty good hands and he has that decent power. And you mentioned his quickness. Um so is when you fight him, is it kind of do you have to mix things up knowing that he is so multidimensional? Oh yeah, I don't. I don't, when I go in there with a guy like him, a uh, 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 a guy with all the skills, he doesn't have an obvious hole. You just have to be organic and and be opportunistic. If the takedown presents itself, go for it. If if you're able to hate the takedown and get an over, overhand or a hook, you go for that. You just got to be opportunistic. And a part of that is always being in the right positions. That way, if you're not in position, you miss those opportunities. And I just want to always be in position. Sorry, I got something in my eye there. Um, yeah. I just wanted to – I want to run this by you. You know, you're going to be fighting in, in, in uh, Manchester, England, Um you know, he's going to have a pretty raucous crowd in favor of him. How much did it help you fighting him in London? Even though the fight only ended 15 seconds, you went through the buildup. You went through the walkout. You saw what it was like, right? You understand what you're up against now. How much do you think that helped you having gone through that previously? I mean, I didn't need to have that experience to already have. I didn't need to have that I had to already have that experience. I experienced that when I went to Australia. And I had to fight Hunt. And I think yeah. Hunt, at that time in 2018, he was a bigger icon than even Aspinall is mm. right now with the belt. Like those fans in Australia with the drinking, they were they were rockers. <laughs> they were about as rockers as, as you can get besides maybe Brazil. So I think I was already mentally prepared even – before this fight let's go with two two last questions um what is your take on uh on jones uh you know saying he he wasn't interested in aspen and he, and he was interested in steve and so the, you know i'm going to touch on what i said to you about the pound for pound rankings I have tremendous respect for Steve Bay Miacic, and I, I I agree with the people who say he's the greatest heavyweight of all time, right? Me too. But he hasn't fought in over three years now, so we're talking about – so how does he – qual? and he's coming off a loss. Where does he qualify for the championship fight? And that, that to me, is the, the one fly in the ointment here, right? I, and so I understand why he's getting the fight, two big yeah. names. But, but what, do, what do you make of that, of that argument? I'm with you. I – I'm an adult. We understand the, the marketing, how this works. A name versus a name equals a lot more than a name versus a non-name. That's just how it is. And and the, there is a small argument for, for Steve Baker, like you said. Even though he is coming off a loss, he was – that was a loss against uh, Ngannou, who, who isn't here anymore. And that was 
that made them one and a, one. So technically, if Ngannou had the belt still right now, it would be Stipe, logically. But that's it's a bit of a reach, regardless. Well, part of the past. Like you said, we get it. We know what it is. It's a name versus a name. And honestly, I'm happy for Stipe. I think I think he deserves to have um, a fight like this. Uh, it's going to be the money. The money's going to be huge. I hope it is. Hope it's huge for him. He deserves that. You know, he's a great guy. And, you know, I when I say that, like, some people go, oh, he's dogging Stipe. No, I'm not dogging Ooh. Stipe. I love, I love Stipe and John both, you know, and, and so – um, you know, but I just, I'm looking at the reality of the situation. Last, last thing is this, uh, you know, do you, are you confident that, uh, if you win your fight, you're going to fight the winner of that fight? Has that been said to you? Or do you have any indication that that will happen? You beat Aspinall. Do you feel like, uh, you're going to be fighting for the, uh, the regular championship, whoever has it? No, no. And no, um, I, I do not believe uh, regardless of uh, if I win the belt, I don't think John has any intention of it. if he beats um, Stipe. If they even have that fight, first of all, they got to have it. And then if they have it, if he doesn't get injured, I don't think he wants to fight a young heavyweight who knows how to wrestle because I could potentially beat him. I think right. he knows that he could win. I could lose, but I could also win. He could also lose. And I think just in terms of the legacy that he has, he wouldn't want to risk it, which yeah. I don't blame him. He doesn't have to fight me. You could just walk off into the sunset and you're, you're still a goat. Yeah, no, he's an incredible – he's been an incredible athlete. I think ESPN had him 66 on the greatest athletes of the uh, 21st That's amazing. Season. Yeah. That's amazing, yeah. So he's he's there. Well, Curtis Blades is amazing too, and he is going to be in a big-time fight with uh, Tom Aspinall, UFC 304 on July 27th in Manchester, England. Curtis, always good to talk to you, my friend. Uh, best of luck to you. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on the show. See you soon. Be well. Thank you. You too.